It's the silly music. Yes, it's the silly music from the silly Sonic game. Welcome back to Sonic Weekly, Sonic Weekly, solely on a new city. Hey, I am Grands. I am one of your hosts. And with me again is Bo. Hi, Bo. Here we go, buddy. Where is that damn fourth Chaos Emerald? Hmm. I think it might be with David. What? David the Lurker, out of the shadows and into the spotlight, the star of the show, David the Lurker. Hi, David. Uh, hi, Grant. Hi, Bo. I will neither confirm and or deny, wait, uh, where uh, it may or may not be. It might not even be the fourth Chaos Emerald that I may or may not have seen. So, yeah, you yeah. know, you know, yeah. the, but I do have this thing on my desk, which I don't think is the fourth one. It's just the green one. Ooh, you, the listeners can't see it. But it's a paperweight that anyone can buy. <laughs> well, you have to buy it. You have to buy the chaos action figure. Oh yeah, which I did get. Right? I got that. Yeah, yeah. Me which, too. Which also comes with with a chaos, uh, the master emerald. With the master very emerald. Neat. Very neat. Yeah. We should we should do a segment on action figures one day, but not today. Oh, that's a good idea. No, not today. Yeah, let's do a really visual heavy episode. That that would be that could be our first YouTube one, but we're gonna have the cameras pointed awkwardly at like the wall. Yeah, or the ceiling. No, yes. but that's because we have a guest today, and as far as I know, yeah. they don't have an extensive Sonic the Hedgehog action figure collection. But you know, I'm I'm okay with being proved wrong. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, our guest today reached out uh, through the email, which we we say in every episode, Sonic Weekly Podcast at gmail.com. Reach out, and this is a listener who reached out, and then well, you'll Follow find directions. Out. Way yeah, to go. you'll find out Listen. what you know more about our guest as we have the conversation but time moves linearly so that's happening right now hey welcome bobby amir kanian amir kanian oh I'm there sorry. we go second one second one amir, on kanian. The amir kanian yeah. <laughs> amir kanian hello welcome or welcome hey, what am i saying welcome you guys your guys' podcast thank you thank for you for me. welcoming that's the one yeah, yeah. we yeah. appreciate the greeting though <laughs> You know, we've had a few other guests welcome us, and we, we always like that. <laughs> Before we get into the news, I thought maybe you could uh, tell the listener how, how it is that we got to talking, because you sent us an email, and you grew up at Sega of America, essentially. Pretty much. You grew up in, in testing at Sega of America, and that, that was in like the headline of the email. I was like, what? Yeah. What's going on here? And then <laughs> tell us a little more. Yeah, so I found out about your guys' podcast thanks to the amazing trio that does the Get Played podcast. And I've uh, the first episode I heard of theirs was their Seaman episode, and I also think it was a good place to start. <laughs> I actually have a sealed Seaman that I really want to play, but I just can't bring myself to opening a sealed Seaman. I just can't do it. Anyway, the story. <laughs> um, my dad was a tester starting around, I believe, 94 then eventually became lead tester, then became the manager of the Sega of America test department all through the Dreamcast years while they were in Redwood City and San Francisco, California. And I was lucky enough to not be a little bastard of a child where I actually went in a couple times and they didn't mind me being around. And I was allowed to continually go there three to four days a week, every summer vacation, and essentially have full reign to the completed game library that they had met a bunch of the testers i'm still in contact with a lot of them today and it was a fantastic way for an eight to roughly 16 year old to spend their summers so yeah i literally grew up uh, i mean sonic's just a, actually i'm a little older than sonic so i'm the older brother i guess in a weird way but um <laughs> but yeah it was a wonderful wonderful way to grow up around video games and around a really good group of testers. And you have credits. You're you're on Moby Games, but, yep. and Bo has been well, saying for the longest time. Sega, yeah, Worldwide ahead. Soccer 98, Duke Nukem 3D, NBA Action 98, Quake, House of the Dead, Panzer Dragon Saga, and NFL 2K. That's a murderer's row yeah. of credits. And then, really, there's a couple more. If I'm, I was definitely on Power Rangers because that was the game that, that I got my, my uh, faux testers badge for because I beat the game... So can I can I tell the story real quick before we do news? Is that cool? Tell the story. Yeah. 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 Also, the news. Who cares about the news? <laughs> right. Like, there's no there's uh, no news. We'll talk about the news, but really, there's no news. Uh, Thirty four counts of Sonic X. Um, <laughs> but, uh, I was, I believe, nine, eight or nine years old, and the Power Rangers game for the Genesis was pretty much in its. It was ready to be shipped out to the processing and go you know, mass produce sent out to stores, all that jazz. And the suit who was in charge of that decision was in the test department while I was there and saw me, this child, who's essentially the, the like the, the main group that they're selling this game to. It's like, well, let's have your kid play it. See what he thinks. 
I beat it in all three difficulty levels in like an hour and 15 minutes. And they said, well, I think we need to make this game harder. And then they realized, oh, there's kids here all the time. Let's start using this kid because uh, we don't have to pay him. And this is who we're trying to sell these games to. <laughs> uh, so I... So I Sega sweatshopped a little bit, but it was a wonderful sweatshop. I loved it. <laughs> yeah. And it was wonderful. I, yeah. And one of my favorite, I don't know if Abe will appreciate me telling the story. It's another little shorty. The NFL 2K game, we had an in test department tournament and I almost won the entire tournament, but the lead tester used a glitch to beat me oh. with three seconds left. And Abe, <gasps> if you're listening, I will never forget. <laughs> i'm very i'm very familiar with nfl 2k and most of the glitches i'm curious what if i'll recognize the glitch if you if I, you remember gosh, i can't is. quite remember i think it was something with a kickoff it was like the very last thing or a, it was some kind of kick related yeah. thing but I, it's gosh it was how old am i again holy hell uh, it was, it was <laughs> a heart a heartbreaker yeah you yeah those? and all the and you know of course the testers gave him can i swear on this is that okay yeah yeah I, we're gonna swear quite a bit later so okay because yeah, i know I i've go gotten ahead. through to the i've gotten through to the your guys's podcast right right before <laughs> right after Bo had a second kid so that's where i am like september of 2023 i've been trying to catch oh, wow. up quickly oh you're going chronologically um, yeah. oh yeah so I, I don't want to wow. miss anything okay. so you're absorbing yeah. all the lore then yeah i'm trying to it's a lot like you guys you guys know your shit so um, yeah, I'm very impressed with y'all. I'm very happy to be here. This is a great way to pop my uh, my podcast cherry. So thank you all. I appreciate it. I was too late. I was trying. I was in slow motion trying to be like, no, don't finish that metaphor. Eh, nah, it's fine. Uh, that's right. Who cares? It's, like, it's fine. I talk, right. I talk really Probably fast. one of Bo's favorite right. bands is the Cherry Pop and Daddies. I mean, that's oh. it's right. So uh, which was that the the I don't original know if that's true or not, Bo? I, I, they're they're a ska band and from the late nineties. They I have maybe like. like a killer sky album and then and like a killer swing album and then a bunch of really weird ones yeah and uh okay yeah there you go anyway <laughs> and anyway so the power rangers difficult it's so a wait power wait, rangers which, on on which platform well you said it was the genesis, genesis was that right? the like the original one that was a fighter or like the game that was based on the movie because i know there were two the game that was, i believe it was the game that was based on the movie if i remember correctly okay because that would be like yeah, the side scrolling the, beat up yeah, streets like. of rage okay that yes. one all right so they said they made it harder because I, I remember getting i got that game I got the game during my parents' first divorce, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and the I, I remember it being somewhat easy. So I guess even still, maybe they didn't make it as hard as they could yeah. have. Yeah, because uh, I think about my game skills now, and like there's, I mean, like I try to do it back and play Vector Man, which is my dad's first lead test game. I go, how the hell did I get past level one as a twelve year old? <laughs> wow, Vector Man also is. Like, oh, yeah, there's some cheat codes, and then you put them in, and you get through it, and then the game makes fun of you for using them. <laughs> it does? Really? Yeah, you yeah. don't get the good ending. <laughs> oh, I didn't know that. I had both Vector Man and Vector Man 2, but it was also one of those things where I don't remember getting past, yeah, you know, one of the early levels. But it was also kind of like, that was sort of the expectation with a lot of games, is like, maybe you would finish it if you got a Game Genie, or you were doing like a sleepover extravaganza for somebody's <laughs> birthday or something. But mm -hmm. a lot of times it was like, well, hopefully these first couple levels are entertaining because that's all I'm seeing of Comic Zone or Sonic yeah. Spinball. Oh, Jesus, Comic Zone. <laughs> oh, right. Did, did you get your hands on Comic Zone? In, I mean... In the trenches? I did, but... How far did you get in? Oh, God. I, I think the second monster killed me when I was... That, that game was <laughs> insane. <laughs> now, I, I used to think of those games as like early dismissal from school games like okay you're <laughs> practicing the early levels every day you're grinding on that and then on that one day where you know, snow comes in or somehow like the teachers have some sort of meeting after school you get out early mm -hmm. you get home you get some extra time and you know, like if the, the sun is just right you sail through and you get to see the credits yeah i mean it'd be a it'd be a bright morning indeed for me to see the credits of comic zone <laughs> right <laughs> yeah that that is, a, that is a game I still haven't beaten either. Vector Man yeah. one and two I eventually did, only after I had them. Not not renting wise, I had to convince someone to buy them for me. But <laughs> wow! So the reason that you grew up at Sega of America in in testing is because, as you said, your your dad worked there. Your dad was Sonic, yeah. right? Your dad is Sonic, <laughs> that dog, right? I mean, and, just you know, that's why I keep my shirt on at the pool. All the weird little spines and things. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't, I haven't looked into it, but uh, you know, I'm wondering about your dad's career in terms of maybe how long he was with Sega or other companies that he worked for, or even just kind of like what that 
was like from just your perspective of what his job might entail? Yeah, it was, it was, um, so essentially, like I said, he, it was first got the job as a temp in 94. I think the first games that were in test, do I remember it was 32 X. I think we were, we was working on 32 X doom. Um, I think doom was in there. I think his first test game as a tester was Ren and Stimpy. If I remember correctly, which I still love that game. I think it's stupidly funny. <laughs> and then, yeah, he just, he finally, he got permanent. Then he, they, they saw that he was fairly, um, efficient so unlike my brain right now uh so they gave him the permanent job then he started getting lead tests and then when the manager at the time mark lindstrom uh somebody that nobody likes uh essentially the robotnik of the test department they found some let's just say unfortunate things on his work computer so he was fired immediately and my dad took over and it was just that was history from there then he was pretty much there from i want to say late 90s to early 2000s and unfortunately, my dad was part of the mass layoff that they had in the early 2000s with a bunch mm. of the, um, a bunch the of the company industries. falling apart. Yeah, yeah. that was yeah, essentially right. the beginning of the end. My dad left right at the beginning of the end. And then he worked a little with 3DO. Uh, they tried, he tried to help them, and they were definitely drowning. But unfortunately, he was only there for a few months and went back to Sega. So, and we all know what happened to 3DO. <laughs> they thrived. Right. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Road Rash still on coming out next fall. Yeah. yeah. 3DO lives. Wow. So, so what was was the job a grind? So, like, yeah. When you're when I'm a kid, I I'd be desperate to trade places with you and be a game tester at Sega, even in some like deputy kid capacity. But then, like, <laughs> if you're really doing the job, though, it's like, okay, I've got to write down the 19 different ways this glitch can manifest. Like, mm -hmm. it's not. It, it probably beats a little bit of the fun out of games for you, right? Oh man, yeah. I, uh when I was older and I could actually understand what the whole, the whole redlining process, like trying to find the bugs. So yeah, you find one bug and if it's something that has been found, you write down how you did it, then, Oh, can I do it 30 more times this way, 40 more times this way? And, and like you said, how many different ways can I get this one bug to happen? And every time, because they're early acts or early version games, you got to use the boot disc every single time. So that's like a two, three minute process, just getting the system booted, ready to go. So you're, it's, it's a slog. <laughs> like if I was an adult looking at that, I would go, maybe last a couple of months before it's like, I can't do this. <laughs> but all the people there, like I still keep in touch with a lot of people. A lot of them are working for different companies, just a bunch of adult kids. And I mean it in the nicest way. Like they were just young at heart, I should say is more appropriate. Like this one, Tim Spangler had a huge Nerf gun collection attached to his cube cubicle walls. Jeff Junio had motion sensor Godzilla's that would roar and you walk past his cube. <laughs> just a bunch of, just a bunch of really fun, on humans so you know my parents owned a diner in small town ohio so my oh. child labor equivalent <laughs> was i was drafted in to do like the dishes and busboy things and i don't really like doing dishes today like i'll i'll do them but i don't like it and I, i'm not i'm not blaming it all on my father but why not uh and <laughs> <laughs> and You're still working through so all I'm, that <laughs> i'm still working through all that right at this moment and but so it didn't ruin sonic and sega for you uh you're listening to this podcast from the beginning so tell us a little bit about like your relationship i guess with sonic and how that maybe changed as, as part of this and and don't forget to throw seaman in there too. yes i mean i mean <laughs> <laughs> phrasing um but yeah so okay so I think my first Sonic game was set was Sonic 2 because that was the most recent release since my parents. No, or was it Sonic 3? When did Sonic 3 come out? 94? 94, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. so I guess so Sonic 3 was the most recent release, which is probably why Knuckles is my second favorite character. And I don't think you guys will guess who my favorite character is. He's essentially the Jar Jar Binks of the Sonic world. Oh, Charming. Big the Cat. Oh. Yep. I don't know why, but I fucking oh, love Big the Cat. I fucking yeah. love oh, him. Of course, he's very lovable. Oh, yeah. I don't, yeah. And I was going to get along. Yeah. Yeah. Good too. I was, I was, I was nervous about that. Are they going to just turn this off when I say Big's my favorite? He, he was unpopular at the time. Like that, at the time, people didn't like Big. But I think since the years have passed, people like very much like appreciate Big, and there's almost no pushback. I think on that. But at the time at the, when it was like, oh, you can play Sonic, Tails, Knuckles, Amy, <laughs> a robot. And a new character. What? Two fishes. <laughs> I don't get what? it. Yeah. Do, 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 do. yeah. Froggy. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But Big is the heart oh. and soul of that game. So. Oh, man. Oh, man. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. <laughs> but, yeah, with Sonic uh, Sonic Adventure, 
And two, probably more so adventure because adventure really holds a lot of nostalgia for me. Sonic Adventure is probably my favorite Sonic game. But in saying that, I haven't played because my dad left shortly after all that. And I never had any other really systems. I think I had an N64. I had a my original Xbox. And then I became a, a PlayStation kid, I think at PS2 or PS3. And I didn't really pay attention to any Sonic games until they started giving out, like they had Sonic Forces on everyone's favorite Sonic game <laughs> because it was a PS Plus game. <laughs> and I think, oh, Sonic game. I haven't really cared about Sonic in a while. And I remember 10 minutes in going, is this what's happened over the years? I don't, <laughs> yeah. I don't understand. <laughs> Um, and then I just looked up Sonic games that have come out and I didn't realize like on all the different systems, like Unleashed, 06, uh, all these different things. I'm like, my God, I, I am horribly behind in my Sonic, uh, consumption. And Forces, yeah, that was the same year as Mania too. Did you ever get around yeah, to playing Mania? Yeah, I got Mania. I enjoyed Mania. I've got Superstars. That's, you know, I have to be in the mood for Superstars. <laughs> yeah. Um, Ford Frontiers, I enjoyed. It felt like, yeah. a, like you guys have said in past episodes, it feels like, uh, like a little callback to some Sonic Adventure esque totally yeah. um, qualities, which I appreciated. I'm actually because of the episodes you were talking about when the DLC came out. I just re put it on or re download on my system to do the DLC, like the the final story. Oh, thing. nice. Yeah. And uh, yeah, those levels are way goddamn harder. Holy hell, <laughs> they're, they're so crazy. much harder. Yeah. Yeah. Because oh, I played the, the spin game, dash now, right? Hard. Like the spin dash, like finally completes. The yeah. the move set. It's like, oh, this is what the left trigger is for. This is great. <laughs> Wahoo. But then yes, it's so much harder. I don't you know, okay, so with Sonic Shadow Generations, Sonic X yes. Shadow Generations, <laughs> do we hope that they adjust the controls so that they mirror the uh frontiers controls? Or should it be one to one Ooh. as it was in generations? One of the annoying things to me when I was catching up on Sonic games that I had missed was that even though the controls were fundamentally kind of the same between Unleashed, Colors, Generations, Forces, Frontiers, each time the button to make you boost was moving all over the controller. And that drives me a little crazy. I want them to figure out, and I think they did with Frontiers. It's the right trigger. That, that's great. That mm -hmm. should be boost. So I answered my own question. Right. They, they should make it customizable if it's not going to be right. matching the last game. I thought you meant like more generally, though, like just remake the generations levels in the frontiers engine and i was like well no that's a bad idea but then it's like well i don't know it's like kind of like more forgiving and a little bit nicer boost experience in frontiers the shadow levels might be if the shadow levels are new those very well may be created in the frontiers right that's cyberspace that's engine yeah that is right. It, there might be a completely different control screen control scheme <laughs> between oh, the sonic on. part and the shadow part uh which that's true it's yeah, you know, that's what I'm going to expect. I'm gonna put twenty I, on. Uh, I did confusion. think when Frontiers was gonna come out that you would see like the window on your PC like minimize when you went between the islands and cyberspace. It's like oh, they glued together two different game engines, and you're gonna be able to see that. But it was way more of a coherent package than I gave them credit for. Yeah. All right. So anyway, uh, okay, we can. We'll come back to talking about your autobiography and talk about music, but we should now at this point look at the news. Oh, and, uh, right. David, maybe you could take a look at Sonic Stadium and walk us through the big headlines in the Sonic uh, Stadium, uh, the Sonic sphere of That's right. news. We are back at the Sonic Stadium news desk provided by our friends at Sonic Stadium. Not sure if anyone there knows this podcast exists, but I'll say you, they're you, our friends. You know them, right? <laughs> uh <laughs> sort of uh, <laughs> but i still can't say if they know this podcast exists or not uh right not much news i think because we're still in that calm before the storm uh but uh, yeah so our top story biggest story most exciting story hey did you know that in shadow the hedgehog shadow was supposed to say fuck <laughs> <laughs> that <is What>? <laughs> whoa hey everyone this is your editor smoothies chiming in with an editor's note uh one day after this episode of sonic weekly was recorded jason griffith logged onto twitter to tell everyone that this story is actually false sega never asked him to drop f-bombs as shadow the true story is that jason was asked to record alternate takes of any lines where shadow swears 
That way, in case Sega wanted to ditch the idea of shadow swearing, they would already have recordings with cleaner dialogue. Here's a quick clip from a 2016 interview where my friends and I interviewed him for a charity stream on our Twitch channel. Yes, and in fact, I think we, I'm pretty sure we recorded alternates. So all mm. the dams, I think we did darns. Um, really? Yeah, I think if, if there was anything that was questionable and it was like, ooh, should that be in there? They said, let's just do an alternate. So I'm sure somewhere out there, there's a bunch of me going, darn it, darn. Hey, wasn't that cool? Uh, so there's a link to the rest of that interview in the description. But for now, back to the show. Ooh. This past weekend uh, in Atlanta, Georgia, was uh, MomoCon, and one of the attend, uh, one of the guests was Jason Griffith, who uh, listeners of this podcast probably know as the voice of Sonic, Shadow, and Jet the Hawk during the uh, the four kids era of of the of the games and. Uh, Someone, someone from, I, I have it sitting here, from GameLuster.com was just, uh, you know, talking to him while he was sitting at his signing thing. It was like, hey, I love Shadow the Hedgehog. And he said, oh, yeah, let me tell you a funny story. Back when I was recording for that game, they sat me down in the studio and they weren't sure what rating the game was going to get. So they were going for an M rating and they hadn't heard back from the agency. So they had me record two takes for every line. And I swear the version that was for the M rating, they had me say fuck in every single line. Sonic, give me that fucking chaos emerald. So very exciting. Um, so hey, hang on before we get too deep into this game luster. Are they lusting after games or are I, they talking about like the shine of the I, game? I don't know. I've never heard of this, this site before. When I when I saw the headline, my first thought was, oh, is this like hard drive dot? whatever and that's what i thought as well i thought because the headline was long it, was, it seemed like a gag that yeah. it was like oh this is sort of like a not funny joke no this is too, like it is funny but it's like a joke that's like too good to joke. check i think like this right. is canon whether or not it's true right but but looking at the site it, it just seems like a normal game news site you you look at it it's normal so if they're doing satire they started just now so uh it it's funny because uh i guess years ago uh during the original fund the charity room event jason griffith had commented on the recording sessions and said like oh he also that like oh yeah we had the the lines where i said damn and then the lines where i didn't swear at all so i guess there were actually three waves like <laughs> fuck damn and then darn i guess or, or nothing at all <laughs> it <laughs> I just want to know who ever went, okay, what if this is the game where Sonic says fuck? I don't... <laughs> or Shadow says fuck. Sonic wouldn't say fuck. Sonic says shit. He has said shit. Yeah. In Sonic X, you hear Sonic say shit uh, like in the second episode. I have to go back and watch that. Yeah, you gotta watch it in Japanese. It, it's swearing is different in oh, Japanese. Though, yeah, right? not not in the yeah. American one. In the American, like, one. I didn't think. I think he would have missed that. Yes, but he does say in English because occasionally oh. uh, Junichi will say something in English because I think he teaches English, and and so he just says shit like it's straight up just the English <laughs> word, not even like oh you can translate that into shit. Like no, no, Sonic just says shit. Fine. <laughs> uh, so me. Maybe that's why they were like, hey, we we have Sonic say shit. Shadow can say fuck because he's edgier, right? I don't. I can't. I can't <laughs> lie to you. I can't pretend like, oh, what a bad idea that is to have Shadow saying, give me the fucking chaos fucking emerald, you pieces of shit. <laughs> oh, I'm going to I'm supposed to tell you that I wouldn't be enjoying that if that were happening <laughs> on the video game. If if every time he fell off of a rail in Skyrim, he goes, I'm the fucking coolest <laughs> and he dies. That's not amazing. I would love that. That would be so good. They should try again with an M rated shadow where he's just cursing oh. up a storm nonstop. Yeah. And it's like a problem. You know, it's like a medical problem that he's <laughs> he's just like constantly that cursing and can't stop. It's always like, whoa, yeah. hey, come on, man, let's settle down. <laughs> cool it. Right. Oh, man. Let's, let's go to a speech therapist. Shut the fuck up, Sonic. I'll beat your fucking ass. Will you Keanu say shit. fuck in the movie? Is that what we're saying here? Oh, <laughs> we hope so. We hope so. Right. Well, if it's PG-13, they allow you one yep. fuck somewhere. So. <laughs> but I think we've just hit upon... Mm -hmm. What's the greatest marketing Sega could do for this? Just release Shadow. <laughs> yeah. The only thing they have to do is switch the audio track. It doesn't have to be for 
no. any system except for what I was originally on. Just yeah. <laughs> hit compile and Comp- push that out. D- yeah. DLC for the GameCube Shadow the Hedgehog <laughs> PS2 Xbox game. Mm-hmm. And maybe in Sonic X, yes, we're saying it, Shadow Generations, there could be, you know, some DLC where you can add that. You can layer it into every level. <laughs> Shadow commentary. <laughs> You piece of shit. Uh, <laughs> that'd probably sell really well. <laughs> right. I would buy multiple copies. Yeah. <laughs> With the M rated version of Shadow, uh, I have outsold like GTA, do you think? It's mm. PS2 era. Oh. Like, would it have been Congress Dead for Days, certainly? Oh, but. wow. Probably not GTA. <laughs> yeah, I think you would do in the Conker's Bad for a Day range, uh, <laughs> which is whatever, you know, 20 copies or however many I, th- I think it would clear that i think it would do all right mm. but you know it, it's possible that like this you know it's not a joke headline uh but it's possible that it's exaggerated it's possible that this you know mm-hmm. but what's also possible is that it's 100 percent real that there's 100 percent a hard drive sitting in someone's desk and eventually <laughs> david the lurker or a david the lurker descendant will <laughs> find somebody at like a an auction and they'll they'll know what desk drawer is valuable and they'll overbid on a desk just looks like a stupid desk they know in that middle drawer is the hard drive <laughs> that contains the fuck drops from shadow <laughs> wow yeah and that might save the world i i did check so conquer's bad per day 55,000 copies so yeah i think that's it Jeez. shadow in wow. could have cleared that easily oh, oh yeah but it'll be it'll conk out it'll conk out for sure 55 000, that doesn't sound right that's it this is what wikipedia wow. says so it like it was a, like, it a question or it was like, worldwide it's pretty low oh, that's well, well, within the first month sorry sorry okay like, oh within the first month. scroll down a, bit a little more. bit yeah <laughs> oh but nintendo didn't publish it in europe really uh-huh. yeah it wasn't easy to find in North America, either. I don't really remember. Oh, hang on, you got to keep around. scrolling down. God damn it! <laughs> Nintendo, Nintendo, and Rare announced that THQ would publish it, and then they did. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. So it did. It did get published in Europe. That's what you're saying. Okay. So it maybe eventually you'll find the total okay. sale numbers. <laughs> Wikipedia, you need to lead with the correct information and then <laughs> add the nuance after. Yeah. That's one I never played. Is that the one where it's the squirrel on D-Day? Yes. Okay. I saw I've seen yes. clips of that and like, what the hell is this? Okay, it's Conker's. <laughs> yeah, it's Conker. Because, right, just quick. Yeah, it was it was originally a, a game called Conker's like Twelve Tales. Twelve Tales. Yeah. yeah, and it was meant it was just supposed to be like, like uh like another Banjo Kazooie because it's from Rare. But then they went, oh, we've done this before. You know, long story short, they they made they made him get rude <laughs> and and he pees and and fights a a poo monster. You know, as one does. Yeah. And it was re-released on Xbox Live <laughs> at some point. I'm curious. Still waiting on it for NSO. Uh, yeah. It's very much a product of its time. What's the deal with Rare, though? They, they don't make games like Banjo-Kazooie or Conquer anymore, right? What's the deal with Rare? What's the, <laughs> right, what's the last game they made? Um, I don't know. I feel like I should know. Um, there were some Banjo sequels. There was like a Nuts and Bolts Yeah, that one. was... That was early in their purchase because they also made like what Viva Pinata in those early days of being yeah bought. Uh, right. I I was gonna. I wasn't. I was half sure this was right, but yes, they made Sea of Thieves. Like that's their most. Oh, recent. that was a while. Uh, right, right, right. Yeah, right. that was their like last big one. Um, oh, but they're with Microsoft now. That's why. Yeah. yeah. That's what I'm remembering. Yeah. Right. So they have access, you know, to all of their original properties, but they definitely can't make another donkey kong i i guess somebody at microsoft for some reason after they bought rare thought they now own donkey kong and and they had to be informed yeah anyway bobby uh let's talk about your life as a musician and let's talk about sega music all right well musician played music when i was 17 i'm now about to be 38 i'm a bassist and ukuleleist oh yeah uh, and oh. A composer per se i moved out to strong words like saying i'm a chef when i just am a kitchen cook but i got really into video game music with uh you know of course the original sonics uh tr- those original sonic tracks are great pretty random thing have you guys heard the john baptiste version of green hill zone 
Yes. Yes, it's in the first movie. Yeah. It's oh, that's right. It is. That's right. Oh, it's brilliant. At first time I heard that, I was like, oh, that's beautiful. And yeah, it's just uh, I've just gotten more and more into into listening to composers. Like I love Bear McCreary's work since he's like the guy. Right? I feel like he's the Danny Elfman of video games right now. He's just doing everything <laughs> and just going back to some of the old stuff. Like when Streets of Rage Four came out, I got obsessed with Streets of Rage music and just got in heavy into all that stuff. I love the Nights into Dreams music, hence my silly hat. Right. <laughs> all the anything knuckles related i tend to love like even though it's a little on the cheesy side that uh but the blood rush i think it's called something like that in in the oh, in frontiers in yeah. the dlc mm-hmm. first time i heard that i should just like stop playing and just listen to it and go this is pretty cool i like this but yeah it's just it took over music became a thing i worked for carnival cruise lines for six years as a band leader Ooh. oh that's interesting that was an experience <laughs> so what's what's a set like on a on a cruise ship well, have you ever seen gone to a casino and seen just like a dance, like a dance hits band, like hits through the decades? Yeah, sure. To a T, just held to slightly higher standards and name tags. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty much it. What what lies ahead for you in your journey of listening to our podcast back catalog is uh, multiple discussions of Sonic and the Beatles. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right. I mean, as as we all know, Sonic is the fifth Beatle. So. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so which yeah which Beatles album do you think Sonic Three and Knuckles is? It's obviously the White Album, right? <laughs> which Ringo album do you think Sonic Six okay. is? Uh... Yeah, yeah. Is Sonic Three and Knuckles the White Album or is it Abbey Road? Because it's, it might be I think Abbey that, Road. I think the uh, book says it's Abbey Road, and Sonic CD is the White Album. Right. Even though it doesn't make a whole lot. Doesn't. Of- it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Yeah. But their whole their whole thing is pretty flimsy, right? They, it really falls apart after Sonic and Knuckles. Really. <laughs> like by, by the time he gets to Sonic Adventure, it's right. it's like I don't know. It's a bunch of the solo albums, right? Mm-hmm. I, you two did start suggesting, oh, like which Sonic game relates to which Weezer album? So there oh. is another there is another hole we could fall down. I'm just not as familiar with. I could do that. Weezer catalog. Most yeah. of Weezer, you know, like or at least yeah. like okay. that middle part. I don't know what's what's going on there. There's there's a blue album. There's the green album. There's the one in between, which name is escaping me at the moment. Uh, so there's a few color other colors. Hair. Pinkerton. Yeah. Pinkerton. Yeah. Yes, I was like, what is that? I can't think of it. <laughs> also a color. Also a color. Yeah. There's the teal yeah, album, there's... white album. They yeah. do a bunch of uh, right or shit. Bobby, a couple quick questions for you. Okay. Yes. <laughs> a couple quick questions. Yeah. Uh, top three. You mentioned Knuckles is your. We know your top two favorite Sonic oh, yeah. characters. Who are your top three? Who's number three? Top three favorite Sonic characters. Um, I'll top go three Sonic. favorite Sonic games. And then top Ooh. three favorite either bands or composers. Those are some things that you... Ooh, and then also, good. the fourth top three, top three most fun games yeah. you worked on. So that, that's four top three. Okay. All right. First is four top, top three Sonic characters. Okay. So big number one, Knuckles number two, the S-Man number three is Sonic. He's got to be in the top three. Oh. Otherwise, I'm an asshole. <laughs> okay. <laughs> top three Sonic games. That would be funny. Number three Sonic games. Number one, mostly for nostalgia. Well, that I means it's a fun game, too. Sonic Adventure. I just love it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, Sonic and Knuckles. Sonic yeah. three, Sonic and Knuckles, because it brought me my boy. Sure. And then I got to say it's probably a tie between the original and Sonic Frontiers for my top three. Oh, wow. And again, there's a Ooh. big gap in there because all those middle games I haven't played. But from what I've heard of your guys... I didn't miss a whole lot. So, <laughs> yeah. You know. All right. As for a top three and you gave a top five, that's totally fine. <laughs> totally understandable. That's how yeah. it works. Uh, okay. Top three favorite Sega games that you had the chance to work on. Ooh. Oh, I think the Power Rangers game has got to be number one, just because it started the whole process and allowed me to experience the very cool things that I did. Number two would probably be Quake. Cause that was just fun to just get with all the testers and blow the shit out of each other. <laughs> you know, just hearing, nice. hearing fragged from like 18 different cubicles and hearing adults screaming at the monitors like hey, i'm 12 i beat you <laughs> and i think vector man just be, i didn't really do work on it but it's a really uh it means a lot to me because it's my it was my dad's like real first step towards going towards management and that means a lot to me because sega was very good to him for the most part so yeah All right vector man. that's awesome that is and then composers and yes, and then and okay. then bands or composers or artists or however you want to answer favorite, you know, musician. Favorite band of all time, Pink Floyd. Okay. Oh, okay. Hands down. Nice. Ooh, God, that's such a tough question. As a songwriter, Paul Simon is a huge, is a big one for me. Mm-hmm. Peter Gabriel is a huge one for me. 
Um, as far as just eccentric batshit craziness, as I already mentioned, I love Danny Elfin. And as far as video games, Bear McCreary, and I can't remember the guy's name who did Streets of Rage, but I love this. I love the whole Streets of Rage. T Lopes. I mean the original. Oh, the original, yeah, the first yeah, one, the not, not four. Yeah, yeah he came back no. to four too. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I forget them. his name, but he is the Teats. Right. I like that guy. <laughs> his name is also escaping me, but it is like. It's the most iconic thing in the world, Streets of Rage. Because even I know. somehow, even though like I didn't own Streets of Rage at the time, I still knew the song, or at least yeah. like yeah. the first song. Yeah, into, yeah. yeah. Uh, that just that opening, that like the credits or that, that the character select screen. Yeah, cool. Uh, the, the drum comes in, and it's just that neat little like synth line over the top. It's just oh, it's so good. Oof. Yeah. <laughs> Bobby, I'm gonna send you a link to this Spotify project I've kind of been working on Ooh. for the last several months with some Jeez. of our listeners. And David and Bo have yet to contribute, but, I, but you guys should. Uh, but there's this playlist we're approaching a thousand songs. Oh, shit. And the, the, the game of it is, is you add one Sonic song and one non-Sonic song at a time. And then you just keep repeating it on okay. and on and on and on mm-hmm. without repeating songs. Oof. I mean, you might have more than one Angel Island, but it has to be a different version. Gotcha. Uh, one okay. version's from Sonic 3, one version's the Sonoe version on the guitar. Okay. And you should add to it. Cool. Yeah. Bobby, thanks for joining us. Thanks for being with us. And uh, we'll have links to your, your Moby games and wherever else you want. Uh, if you want people to follow you online, uh, yeah. you can send us that link and we will sure. have that in the description. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Thank, Thank you, guys. you for reaching out to us. Thank you for following directions to reach out to us. <laughs> and we have enjoyed it. Yeah. Yeah. No, very much. Sorry, my computer is being a, a a twat waffle but you know <laughs> i mean it's been working so right now so yeah now yeah. it is thanks it thanks. is working now well here since it's working i, I can ask you <laughs> okay because you say sonic adventure is game uh so yes. it has a lot of, of different music uh the vocal themes in particular if we're talking about top <laughs> yeah. three um <laughs> although it might it might be uh, an easy given what number one is but like yeah top three of Oh, let's just do all the songs, not just the vocal songs. <laughs> let's make it wild. Yeah, what are your songs. top? What are your three favorite songs in the original Sonic Adventure? Wow! Oh. Wow! 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 Okay, number one is probably going to be a weird and unexpected one because for some reason this is a song when I hear it, I like go right back to that like first time I'm playing it mm-hmm. and first time gliding his knuckles is Mystic Ruins from Sonic Adventure. Yeah, yeah. Like that weird, like almost hippie, spacey one, and I don't know what Absolutely. it is, but it I just hear it and uh, I go right frontiers. back to the being a kid, and I love it yeah um number two the theme right open your heart yes yeah and then number heart. three uh there was some slap bass in it uh, the, the central station song do, do, yeah, do, station do, square. Do, do, do. oh yeah station square that's one station of my square. Thank ones you. right there and i love that the bass line of that is so cool and that, right I, correct me if Sonic, i'm wrong yeah it's like Sonic sorry, super quick oh sorry oh. let me interrupt you. Well, i was just gonna say super quick i don't think any of these games use slap bass as much as sonic does that's all i was gonna say right uh, oh yeah, yeah well because you know the um because dreams come true but uh nakamura the you know the guy who wrote sonic one and two i mean he is a bassist God. so i think like bass is ingrained in the dna of sonic the hedgehog and Paul music mccartney is <laughs> <laughs> the, cr- the creative driving force of the beatles just like sonic is the creative driving force of sonic mm-hmm. the franchise yeah. That analogy definitely holds up, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay. So I don't know if you heard that, but let's just say <laughs> thank you, Bobby, and 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 let the poor man <laughs> let, let him go. Let him let him leave cleanly without like hitting him with the door constantly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm hoping oh, the, the sorry, audio Bobby. is fine. Uh, <laughs> smoothies yeah, smoothies fine. could just cut it. But out. he won't, because I'm going to ask him separately to leave all of this in, so that all the <laughs> listeners know. <laughs> they, they know what happened. Okay, I didn't go on. Right, which is yeah. why we cut the news short, but let's be honest, what other news is there? Because um, you, you look at the headlines, spoiler alert, IDW Sonic Issue 69 is out. Oh yeah. That's that's hot news, the, the comics. Well, it was on hiatus. It was. It, it's come yeah. back, and it's still not caught up. To post for it's still just yeah. in a post forces pre murder of Sonic the Hedgehog pre frontiers yeah. timeline. Yes. Wait, so comics aren't coming out every month again. Um, or these days. The the last few months the the main series was on hiatus while they were publishing Frank uh, Fang the Hunter. Oh, which sure. is not something they normally do. Like for the other when IDW releases other miniseries, it's usually at the same time so like when scrapnik island was coming out sonic with the main sonic title was also coming out the same month so you just had two books for whatever reason 
they put the main title on hiatus while Fang was was rolling out. And so now now we're back. Uh, the, I haven't read the newest issue yet. It's a but it looks like it's um it's it's a it's a Sonic Riders inspired adventure. They're on their they're in the riders gear. They're on the riders boards. I mean, just in time for Sonic Rumble. Oh yeah, I guess that's a, that's <laughs> oh, yeah. that thing. Here's some news. Right. Well, did any of us get? Well, did any of us try to get in on the beta? Did any of us? I did sign up for the beta. Uh-huh. I did receive an email sign up for the beta. Uh-huh. I neglected to follow through on it. I did not play the beta. I was just, I was not that interested. I saw some of the, the uh, gameplay videos and I was like, mm-hmm. gee, it really does look just like a Sonic skinned Fall Guys. And I wasn't that interested in Fall Guys. I mean, it looks a lot like Fall Guys. And I just don't, I really don't like playing games on my phone. My phone is not <laughs> for games. My phone, my phone is for one game which is how long can I hold my phone until I get so mad at my phone that I have to drop it? <laughs> That's the only game I play on my phone. Right. Well, I, I think I'm, it does. Yeah, I'm more of a yeah. summer guy. It's just not, it's not going to work for me. A summer guy? <laughs> not a fall guy. Oh, I <laughs> God. It took me way too long to get that. <laughs> Do you know about... I'm not going to bring this up. Never mind. Go ahead, David. I'm sorry. I was going to say, (laughs) oh, right. It's a a little tease because we uh, over at FTCR, we're going to be putting up some gameplay footage, even though everyone else has already seen it. We're going to do our own. So, hey, I didn't play it. Uh, Chris played it. (laughs) You're talking about Sonic Rumble? Sonic Rumble. Yeah. So um, I I, I saw some some Zippo like speculation that. Uh, Dream Team might be They're, coming to other platforms. Right. So one of the leakers of video game things, Midori, was saying that a Apple Arcade exclusive would be announced in June to come to consoles. Not necessarily that it would be a Sega title, I don't think. Oh. But right. because okay. Midori well, typically would... does relate or uh, relay Sega information, people assume Sega and assume Sonic Dream Team. But right. That's several assumptions. What if it was Choo Choo Rocket? I would be okay with that. That would be fine. Oh, yeah. Choo Choo Rocket. Yeah, I don't understand why. I kind of would want that. Sorry, my, I think my connection was messing up. No, you're good. I, the, the hits of Sonic Team is like the one thing missing from Switch. Mm-hmm. It's like Knights should be there. The Sonic Adventure games should be there. Choo Choo Rocket should be there. Burning Rangers should be there. And then, and then you've really got everything. Like once you port over like the couple Nintendo titles still remaining, or like you know, there's then it's complete, baby. Yeah. Then can you get complete. Billy Hatcher? Or can you get the GameCube? I think get Billy Hatcher. Fine. Sure. <laughs> right. I mean, yeah, a, a Sonic Team collection. I think people would get it because it would it would just be oh here's all the weird games they made in one place. If you're trying to release them separately, I think it's it's a harder sell. Yeah. But if it is Knights, Burning Rangers, Juju Rocket. Samba Would game. you put Space Channel Five in there? Because like they were kind of all in the Sonic Team family for a little bit, but I never thought it was official. No, I I wouldn't put Space. To me, Space Channel Five is is it's 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 its own thing. Just like how like Rub Rabbits and stuff like that's technically yeah. Sonic Team, but that's only because the the two groups merged together right before the game was done. Like that to me isn't true Sonic Team. Although I guess what that Astro Boy game is technically a Sonic Team game too, right? It gets yeah, it gets Astro a little Boy, weird. The Astro Boy is in the new one. No, the one for, like for the PS2. Oh, yeah, they branched out for a while there. Oh. They did, but yeah, I would just put like the games people think of as non-Sonic Sonic Team. Throw them all together. Just do it. Have a good time, and people will buy it because it's many games instead of one. And it says Sonic on it. It does say Sonic. I mean, you could put a Sonic game on there. Uh, put a couple put, Sonic ooh. games on there. Put Chaotix on there. It would confuse everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Chaotix has never, ever been re-released. Except on GameTap. What's GameTap? Oh. Uh, GameTap was a was a internet computer game service that was through RealPlayer. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It... Uh, they made a, a Sonic documentary back in the like earliest days of YouTube, which was sort of a revelation at the time because it was like the first time, at least in the West, we heard like about the actual making of Sonic and like, oh, you, you, the like he was inspired by Bill Clinton and Santa Claus and in like, oh, the Michael Jack, like all the things that we now take for granted. A lot of this basic info actually 
came out of that game tap. Wow. Do we know who put it together? Uh, I believe it was Frank Cifaldi who, uh, oh, because, yeah, all right. like yeah, he worked okay. at game tap. At legit. The, yeah. And like, you know, he, he is, he is Mr. Video game historian now, but he, but I think less people remember that before, uh, it was called Sonic the Hedgehog, a very quick history. I think it was in four parts. There was actually one release before that, which uses some of the same, uh, interviews. It's like a very truncated version released earlier that, does contain the for the first time the story of uh Sega of America saw Sonic the Hedgehog and wrote the very angry memo memo <laughs> 10 reasons why Sonic will fail like that comes from that which didn't make it into the four parter even though it's more expanded um so I, I don't know it, it's um you know the history of Sonic histories they're they're important uh if you haven't seen the original game taff introspectives or retrospectives uh you should definitely <laughs> check those out, listeners. Uh, and, okay, so and, aside from this very <laughs> obscure uh, rent, like streaming rental, yeah, store, yeah, do they have the whole 32x library? Uh, I don't remember if they have the whole 32x library, but it was the only time 32x games were re-released. Wow, we're we're on this thing. It was like, wow, you you can do it. Hmm. Never did it again. And of course, like once that disappeared, you couldn't play it anymore. I mean, it's got to be the most important sonic game that that's still like locked to Mm -hmm. the most obscure hardware you could even say like (laughs) sonic labyrinth got re-released a couple of times it's been uh yeah Yeah, at least as our friend keith stack noted sonic blast has been (laughs) re-released recently right because all the the game (laughs) games were in dx and then yeah. Right. And and gem slash make a collection plus and yeah, Origins. So that's three times all the Game Gear games. But not Chaotix. And def not Chaotix. Yeah. And definitely not Sega Sonic the Hedgehog. Uh yeah. 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 That seems like the bigger white whale, because they don't understand how to do the trackball. Right. Yeah, that's the one I would like to play. Wouldn't that just more. translate pretty well to like a stick? You would think so, but every like Everyone who emulates it every time, they're just like, really? I can't get the controller to work right. Like, it really does mm. need, I guess, that trackball. But it, but in it's the like era of, ranks. yeah, but in the era of touch screens and, you know, like the little touch pads, like in a PS, PS5, like, I feel like you could do it. Yeah. I think it's possible. I think we do with the technology. I think you can do it now. On the Switch, it'd be easy if it's in handheld mode. But if the Wii U was still around, you definitely could just do the touch pad yeah i'm i'm saying sega you put frontiers 2 on hold <laughs> and give us that really good conversion of sega sonic the hedgehog what about uh burning rangers news desk we have, we have oh yeah at, the uh, rings of saturn. saturn i heard they're rings bright of saturn yeah oh boy well so i've been on a bit of a streak with the am2 fighters so last week i took a look at fighting vipers and originally i was looking for the Sonic characters that were in the arcade game and then eventually made their way into Sonic the Fighters. They're not in the Saturn port, but you know what was in the Saturn port was an alternate costume for Honey and not Honey, Honey the Cat, no. but the costume for Honey was uh, the one for Pi from Virtua Fighter, you know, the right. Uh, right. other AM2 fighter. Hi, John. Pi, yeah, the, just, the, that's her. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I don't know why. I just like I remember her last name. Let me just say it. You yeah, got it. No, if you know it, say it. If you if you if you got him, smoke him. That's right. In terms of the, <laughs> the in terms of way, Sega yeah. trivia, that's right. So and so that was last week, and then so this week I took a look at Fighters Mega Mix, the meeting of Virtual Fighter and Fighting Vipers, also on the Saturn. And uh, so I, I guess the headline news that there is I found a couple of cheat codes for that that nobody ever knew about. Uh, and then also I found in the game data references to, you know, I'll go in least exciting first, a character from Virtua Fighter 3, whose name I can't pronounce. It's A-O-I? Owie? I, I, O-I? Sure. Yeah, let's, let's say that. And uh, Ryu and Ken from street fighter well so that's yeah. that's surprising right this was, yeah fighters, fighters mega mix was a mega mix of sega stuff but not a mega mix of capcom stuff right i mean so were the devs just screwing around were was there talks with capcom did they ever attempt it i don't know but they're they're sitting in there multiple places 
That's a good question. I'd like to know because Capcom did. I mean, they loved, they supported the Saturn. There are plenty of, you know, Street Fighter games. games on the Saturn. Yeah. yeah. And Which crossovers were, and crossovers like, yeah, they love their crossovers. I mean, they were hanging out with Marvel all the time. Uh, yeah. SNK. Like, it makes sense that at some point, maybe someone said, hey, do you think we could? Um, I'd, I'd like to know the story behind that, why it didn't happen, why it fell apart, or if it, maybe it was just a pie in the sky. Hey, let's throw these names in here. We're joking around, but likely they'll never actually happen. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I, I would really love to know. I, always my hope with this is that somebody will like retweet it into the Japanese internet and then like somebody will answer, which has happened a couple of times with Burning Rangers, but uh, hmm. no look on Mega Mix yet. But yeah, I was uh, pleased to find that. Uh, I would have rather had for you and Ken than Deku, the original fighting or fighters Mega Mix character that wasn't in a previous game. Or. Um, I don't know, Mr. Meat. That's a weird one in, <laughs> in Fighters Mega Max. This is a meat. I, uh, I like playing as the AM2 of Palm Tree. That's nice. But uh, I could lose Mr. Meat. <laughs> I've never played as the Palm Tree. I've never had the patience to unlock him. But, well, so, uh, one of the things in the cheat codes I found is you can like pretty much unlock most things without having to play the game 500 times. Like This is a game that really makes you work for the unlockables. Right. <laughs> right because you also there was a, a matching game i saw oh yeah that that one's not new to me that was in the japanese strategy guide so that that is, is something that people knew but not necessarily over here in the u.s yeah, but it was cut from the u.s release that's oh, right. so, oh yeah, okay oh. yeah there, so there's a secret matching game and it's just like okay here's a bunch of question marks you gotta remember which characters under each one you can do them all you get a picture of janet from virtua cop right you get to do it again and uh, you get a, the same picture of Janet, but she's not wearing her armor. Whoa! Oh, yeah. well, that's a little spicier. <laughs> Do it again, and she's not wearing her lower armor. <gasps> and <laughs> oh no, what happens next? That's it. That's the end. Oh, oh, oh. Well, all right. Well, then I guess the children are safe. Um, <laughs> the yeah, I've seen the at least that first picture of 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 uh, of her sitting there. So. I guess I must have been aware of it to some degree. I think the one with the armor is part of the normal image set you can unlock. Oh, okay. Yeah. (laughs) Man, you know, there's a lot of images out there. But you know what? By getting to the end of what you've just listened to, you've unlocked something even greater. And that is, of course, unlocking in its entirety another episode (laughs) of Sonic Weekly. Ah, yes, that's right. Sonic Weekly, the podcast you've just listened to, where we talk about Sonic once a week, just about. If you've gotten here so far, you know, if you enjoyed what you've listened to and you haven't already, you can, of course, subscribe to this podcast using whatever podcatcher of choice tickles your fancy, be it uh, Apple Podcasts, be it Spotify, be it the Android exclusive (laughs) podcast addict (laughs) whose code is locked up nice and tight but works as fine as if it were open source, I swear. Uh, (laughs) uh, And of course, you know, in those, you can uh, subscribe, uh, you know, give us, give us a rate, give us a review, let people know that you're enjoying it. And of course, if you, you know, don't, don't want to deal with a catcher, we are on YouTube as well. It's at Sonic dash weekly. You got to have the ad and the dash, which, uh, it's up, it includes gameplay footage from friend of the show, Jack of Old Games. So you got something to look at. Usually, those games do relate. Uh, sometimes uh, stronger than others, but it's always fun to watch. So you should uh, give it a subscribe, uh, comment. We'll read some of those comments. We'll read some of those reviews. And if you want us to read something a bit longer, you can reach the show, sonicweeklypodcast at gmail.com. Write us a letter, drop us a line, and we'll have... You know, we're going to do a mailbag episode some point in the near future. But you also got to email us if you want to get into our Discord server. That's right. Uh, ask us for that link and you'll be able to join and talk to like-minded Sonic the Hedgehog fans. And it's not all Sonic the Hedgehog. There are things out there that aren't blue and cool like the planet. I don't necessarily understand them, but they do exist out there. <laughs> of course, we got to thank, uh, got to thank Smoothies 
for the edit. I'm sure he's having a, a good time with this one. Once again, I want to thank our guest, uh, Bobby Americanian. Uh, no, Americanian. You know what? I knew it. I've said I said it right before, and because I'm overthinking it, I can't say it right now. But that's that's okay. Thank you, Bobby. Uh, and of course, gotta thank the other two guys who are sitting across from me at this table, Bo and Grant. You know, because I thank Bo for his diligent Saturning, <laughs> Saturning, and and Grant, you know, for for keeping it all going. <laughs> thank you, David. Thanks, David. Thank you, Bob. 